Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I am joined by my fabulous co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. Uh, and today we are interviewing a Bitcoiner Oscar Mary from Fountain, a podcast 2.0 application, which is thinking different and is integrated with Lightning. Uh, so, how are you doing today, Oscar? Hey, Lawrence. Great to be on. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thanks. Nice. Uh, and so Fountain, uh, I, I'll let you give us a quick intro to what Fountain is and what it's about uh, in a second. But I guess first question was, uh, who, who's the team uh, behind Fountain? Uh, you know, give us, a, give us a quick introduction to yourself and your, your colleagues. Yeah, so uh, we're a small team at Fountain. There's just three of us, myself, um, my business partner, Nick, and we have one employee, Niall, as well. So it's the three of us building Fountain Podcast. Nice. And, and what do you guys, uh, do you have like different roles within the company or, or what do you guys get up to? Yeah. So myself, I'm the uh, CEO, but also kind of leading the product and tech side of things. So originally um, I built the app uh, myself. And then since then, Niall's come on as a developer to help me out on the technical side of things. And then Nick um looks after everything on the marketing and podcaster side that's really important for us obviously because we're onboarding new podcasters to the lightning network through our podcaster wallet feature so yeah happy to talk about that more uh in a bit but yeah that's that's our kind of roles but s such a small team that we kind of all do everything as well standard for uh, like sort of startup life yeah <laughs> it's just like two of you or three of you you do you know you're wearing multiple hats um been there before i i guess so yeah it would be good if you can sort of explain to everyone give us the you know the, the brief on, on fountain like uh where where the idea came from what it's about and like why it's different and why people should download the app yeah happy to so fountain fundamentally is a podcast app it does everything that you'd expect a podcast app to do in terms of searching for podcasts saving podcasts and listening to podcasts the two key differentiators are number one as a listener on Fountain, you can create and share clips. And we believe this is really exciting because what it allows you to do as a listener is essentially surface and share the best moments from podcasts without actually having to go and listen to the full episode. I'm happy to talk about more about why we think that's so important and why it's kind of so beneficial for sharing and discovering insights from podcasts. Then the second differentiator is you can support your favorite podcast with Bitcoin as you listen. So you can stream per minute and you can send what's called a boost, which is kind of like a tip with a message. And that's all done over the Lightning Network. Gotcha. Okay. So the first, the first part is like, um, so listeners can create clips and share them, right? Like, uh, the thing. yeah, so it's kind of like uh, turning your listeners into advertisers for you in a way um so like fans can help spread the, the message i think you're right like if you hear little clips like uh, i know one of the things that joe rogan did really well was having his like clips that were all over youtube that kind of people would hear a little bit and then they'd end up listening to the full show um and i know other podcasts have done that really well as well like little sound bites can be can be great for that um, where did the idea like i guess what what were you what were you um and and nick doing before fountain like where did this idea come from what what were you guys up to and, and how did this come? Is this like a eureka moment or is there a... So I was, I've worked in tech my whole career, basically. I actually uh, previously had a, had another business um, which started as a digital agency and then we kind of switched to being more of a studio. We built apps in the, uh, the voice app space. So I think Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, um, sold that business um, a few years ago. So I was kind of in between things, like trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. And um, really, me and Nick were just experimenting with, we both shared this belief that there's an issue in not just podcasting, but audio content in terms of how do you actually share and discover it. Um, so that's really what we set out to do. And then the, we actually built a prototype of the clipping UI, which was kind of like the first, um, you know, aspect of Fountain to actually get built. So we, on Fountain, the way you create clips is a little bit different so rather than messing around with the audio wave with which some other podcast apps let you do with fountain we actually transcribe the entire episode and then as a listener you can just select the text that you want and that's how you create the clip and then we'll automatically based on the word timings of the transcript kind of cut up the audio for you and what this does and the reason why we thought it was gonna you know be 
really well received by listeners is that it just makes it so much easier to create a clip because imagine you're trying to create a clip of a, an hour long podcast um, just from the audio wave. What you end up having to do is hold a lot of information in your head. So you've got to hold, okay, what timestamp did this segment that I want to clip start at? Like what's the actual time? What timestamp did this end at? And then what did the speaker actually say in all of, in between that start time and that end time, all whilst like messing around with an audio wave slider. So it's actually really difficult. Whereas everybody knows how to just select text on a page and edit it. We do it every day, whether it's in an email or a message or, or anything else. So it was that ability to really easily and quickly create clips without too much kind of cognitive load that was where Fountain started. Um, and then very quickly, we were following what Adam Curry and Dave Jones were doing with Podcasting 2.0. And separate to my kind of previous experience with tech, I'd always been a massive believer in Bitcoin. Never thought I'd necessarily work in Bitcoin. Um, but when I saw the Podcasting 2.0 value spec, it was just like two of my uh, you know, deepest interests in podcasting and Bitcoin kind of um, merged in a way. And so we doubled down on that and made it a big part of uh, the Fountain app and the experience. Uh, that's interesting. I, I think that the way that Clips is done from, as you described, is pretty uh, pretty different. And I think you're right. Like, it seems like a much better idea. I, I've, I've experimented with the app, but I haven't like looked at the Clip function yet. So I'll have a look at that um, actually after this. But I um, is it something that has been well received compared to other applications? Like, have you had feedback uh, around it? Are people Are people fans? Yeah, definitely. And I think touching on what you said before about how successful Joe Rogan was through his the his clips channel on YouTube. So we know that clips are beneficial to podcasters because they help those podcasters get their content discovered and they help people sample it. And ultimately they will drive audience to the main podcast. So we knew it was going to be beneficial to podcasters. Um, but it's also really beneficial beneficial to listeners too, because I'm sure you know, many of the people listening to this and many of you guys um, had the same problem as me, which is I've got too many podcasts to listen to each day. There's just too much coming through. And so we have a decision every day to make about which episode to listen to. If I see that somebody I follow on Fountain has created a clip from an episode, I can just quickly listen to that clip, 30 seconds, one minute, 90 seconds, and I can get a feel for the episode and I can understand, okay, do I want to go and listen to the full thing? Um, so that's one benefit of giving the clipping ability to listeners. It kind of serves as a signal for you about which episodes are, you know, important to go and listen to. And then the other thing that's quite cool about extending the power of clipping to listeners is that you can sometimes listen to things that are not in your um, existing bubble. So, you know, maybe you listen to or subscribe to 10 podcasts and you listen to them regularly, but that's, that's not to say that a podcast out there that's on a completely different topic that maybe you're not that interested enough to go and subscribe to it, but maybe there's one episode that you wouldn't mind just listening to on a one-off. And so again, if someone that you're following on Fountain, or maybe you just discover that clip on uh, an external social media site, if you can hear a minute clip and it sparks your interest, then maybe you'll end up going and listening to the full episode and you know learning about something that's outside your normal you know, filter bubble of, of podcast episodes coming through. So I think, you know, there's a lot of benefits bringing the clipping capability to listeners and doing it in a social way. And I think um, it's definitely been really well received. And actually, it's really, it's quite fun just seeing what other people are clipping because you get a window into their listening experience. I think one thing that we could do that would make the experience much, much easier is... Right now, we're actually using a commercial transcription service, which means that when you hit that clip button for the first time, it takes like a couple of minutes for it to transcribe. Obviously, that's not the best experience for brand new users coming to the app, but hopefully at some point we'll, uh, we'll fix that and actually roll our own transcription and we can have instant transcription. For the transcription service, are you guys charging podcasters for that? I know with other podcasting services, they charge for transcription. No, so we don't actually charge podcasters or users for the transcription. Um, one of the issues we have is actually a surprisingly large number of podcasts have dynamic ad insertion, which means that, you know, the audio that 
I get as a listener might be different to the audio that you get. And because our clipping UI depends on the word by word timestamps, if one person has a 45 second ad versus a 30 second ad like inserted into the audio, it completely messes up the transcript. So we actually transcribe every episode individually for each user, which is why using a commercial service, we wouldn't be able to do that at scale. Uh, you know before you actually hit the button. We've got some ways that we think we can improve that. But um, yeah, that's how it works right now. Yeah, one thing you mentioned was like the clipping and, and the power of clipping as well. Um, and I think, have you got, have you seen um, Midnight Gospel on Netflix? A little bit, a little bit different, but um, I don't know if you've seen it or heard of it. It's, um, no. it's like a, it's like a sort of fully, I, I, when I first like, heard of, like, heard of it or whatever, it was just, I think it was probably about two, two years ago um, when it came out, but I, um, it's basically clips from uh, Duncan Trussell's uh, podcast and he has like a podcast where he talks with lots of different people uh, and it's kind of quite like uh, weird odd topics, right? They'll be talking like death or like, quite like deep stuff. Uh, and what they did was they, they kind of took, clips from that and then created like this kind of it's really bizarre i don't know how to explain it but it's kind of like an animated podcast so they like a it'll be like an animation of the guy, a guy and like uh, going through like an animated world and like talking to so it's kind of like he's interviewing a random person he sees in this like create world that's been created and each episode is like a different world different story but obviously like it's using the podcast and then they like they obviously record little bits to kind of make it f fit in with the story they've created in that episode but it's pretty cool and that got me listening to the duncan trussell podcast uh which is like a bit different because it's obviously a lot longer and there's lots of different topics different interviewees but um something like that would be really cool in the future like i can imagine a situation where uh i don't know maybe some animate like if there's a situation in the future where we can get computers that can basically create animations for us like on the fly for podcasts or something uh i can imagine that could be kind of cool but it came to mind as uh all these different things like joe rogan i i started listening to that because of the clips channel on youtube years ago uh the midnight gospel got me listening to it so it's always like i find the podcasts i listen to are always because of some kind of shared clip or more digestible different version of the podcast that i've heard first and then I end up listening to it. So I think it adds some credence to what you're saying. But um, question for you here is uh, when it comes to podcasting 2.0, obviously, as you said, you created this clips function um, and then you were listening to what was going on with Adam Curry and, and et cetera around uh, lightning and, and podcasting 2.0 uh, and made the decision to kind of go down that road with uh, with Fountain and with this, this, this business. Uh, what is it about podcast 2.0? Well, I guess if you could give us a basic... Uh, thing on, on why the listeners should give a give a damn about podcasting 2.0 but what is it about podcasting 2.0 that that right uh, kind of appeal to you guys like why did you decide this was the way to go um when it came to the app sure so podcasting 2.0 is a movement that was started by adam curry and dave jones um, and it has two main goals the first goal is to preserve the open nature of podcasting so podcasting's incredible because it's built on uh, and the open rss standard which means that you know listeners can use whatever app they want to there's healthy competition in the podcast app space um and also there's not the ability for any one platform to go and censor um a podcast which is obviously a big issue that we've seen on other social media platforms um having said that the big platforms like apple and spotify are starting to try and turn podcasting into this kind of walled garden so th that's the first aim of podcasting 2.0 is to maintain that open uh, nature of podcasting and then the second is to actually extend uh, what podcasting is and try and build and add new features to the open source standard um, and so there's a bunch of these there's things like chapters which allow you to kind of browse through the episode bit by bit which we also support there's things like person and location tags so that you can, as a podcaster, you know, put information about the guests and, and the, those, the apps can then render that. We support that also. Um, but obviously, the this particular tag that uh, we're really excited about and has generated a lot, lot of excitement is the value block. And so the value block, what this does is it allows any podcaster to just put a lightning pub key in their RSS feed and then any of the podcasting 2.0 apps that um, support the value block can send lightning payments to that uh, pub key. So the really exciting thing about this is it introduces micro payments to podcasting, but it does it in a way that's completely open. So as a podcaster, 
if you want to, you can self-host your RSS feed and you can run your own Lightning node and people using any number of different apps can still not only listen to your podcast, but also support you um, and support you through micro payments. Um, so yeah, they're the two aspects of podcasting 2.0. And obviously, yeah, we think the value block and, and streaming money is the most exciting one of those. Yeah, um, I was going through the website and um, I was getting the kind of vibe that um, Fountain is Bitcoin centric. In a way, like I'm just wondering, do you have um, a dear like non Bitcoin and like podcasters on the fountain? Yeah, definitely. So I think a large number of the early users of Fountain are people that are also excited about Bitcoin. I think, you know, for me personally and for many others, it's really cool to be able to stream Bitcoin per minute over the lightning. Like I think that's a, an incredible example of the power of. Uh, Bitcoin and specifically Lightning, like there isn't another payments technology that would let us do that right now, especially not in an open way. Um, so yeah, a, a large number of our users are are Bitcoiners, but I also think that the clipping in particular, um, and also just the ethos of podcasting 2.0 has attracted a lot of users that weren't previously aware of Bitcoin or into Bitcoin. One of the interesting things is, a lot of our users have actually been introduced to Bitcoin for the very first time through Fountain and through podcasting, because this is all driven by the podcasters, not necessarily by Fountain. So, you know, we have we speak to podcasters and we tell them, hey, instead of using Patreon and asking users to, you know, leave the podcast app that they're in, go to Patreon, pick a subscription and then figure out whether they want to pay over time. Instead, just get them to use a podcasting 2.0 app like Fountain. And literally the moment that they're hearing that amazing bit of content, they can hit the boost button and pay you. So podcasters um, are excited about that. And they are asking their listeners to switch. So we're getting a lot of new users that, yeah, have never heard of Bitcoin before. And, you know, we have a convoluted way for them to get their first sats on Fountain. Obviously, we don't offer like a, an on-ramp uh right now um but yeah so i think that's really exciting that people are uh, being introduced to bitcoin for the first time not because of the uh you know the monetary uh system or thesis not because of not because it's they see it as an investment but because it's literally just something that they want to use to support their favorite podcast do you do you kind of feel like um i know you mentioned that you know, you know do you get you know your feedback from podcasters but do you kind of feel like it's also Kind of limits you know your you know potential you know um audience you know uh because not everybody as we all know lightning adoption is not nearly where you know it can be or it should be and if um lightning in itself it's still i think i think most people agree that it's still a niche it's still in you know it's still very early in terms of you know development even among bitcoiners so how much more would it you know would it would, you know, new users find it difficult to actually, you know, if they wanted to support their new, you know, support new users trying to support, you know, podcasters, you know, on Fountain, do you think uh, there's, you know, there's kind of barrier to entry and how do you, you know, work on, you know, solving that? Yeah, great point. I think definitely there is right now a little bit of a barrier. So obviously when we're speaking to podcasters, as soon as we say the word Bitcoin, you know, that will put people in a certain frame of mind. There's a lot of connotations about what that is and what that means. So it does put some podcasters off for sure. But I think one of the things that's been really interesting to see over the past year since we've been working on Fountain is that, you know, there's developments outside of what we're doing and outside of even the podcast industry that are pushing this all forward. So a massive one was when Cash App um, added Lightning support, that was just so helpful for us because suddenly as a podcaster, it becomes more, it becomes less of a, you know, niche thing to, to try and uh, do. It, it becomes something that, okay, suddenly 65 million people in the US or whatever the Cash App user base is are able to onboard to. So I think whilst there is a barrier right now, especially with podcasters, um, every year with more and more big companies adopting lightning i think that will only lower and the other thing which i mentioned before is 
there's not an alternative here. You know, the alternative is Patreon, which doesn't make sense for uh, podcasts. Because if you think about Patreon, you're paying a subscription. So every time your subscription renews, you have to think about, do I want to pay for this podcast that I maybe only, maybe I don't listen to every episode. Maybe, you know, I just dip in and out. Um, And so there's a lot of friction in signing up to Patreon. And there's also a lot of friction in staying subscribed to a podcast on Patreon. Whereas as you're listening, as you're consuming that amazing podcast content, if you can just press literally a button in the player, send a one-off payment, that's a much better experience for listeners. And it's a much um, better experience for podcasters at the end of the day, because they'll get paid more. And there's, there's not other technology that we could use. So once we explain that to podcasters, once we explain that this is the only technology that works, and this is not just fountain, this is not just our crazy idea, you know, look, this is being adopted by Cash App, this is being adopted internationally, like this is happening. Those, once we have that conversation, it makes it a little bit easier, but there's definitely an initial hesitancy. I just wanted to announce that this podcast is now on Fountain. So if you guys want to boost us, go ahead. Nice, yeah, yeah, hit the boost, send a message. One of the interesting things is that, um, and we've seen a few podcasters kind of uh, not realize this, is it's not enough just to lightning enable us. You have to ask your audience to send you money and you have to ask them every single episode as well and you have to give them a good reason why they should actually send you money it's all part of the value for value uh ethos that adam curry developed but you know you have to yeah you have to ask your audience to pay and you have to say to them you have to ask them in a way where it's convincing as well you have to say you know how much value are you actually getting from this show is it worth to you the same as a cup of coffee maybe well send me that or send me nothing if you don't think it was that valuable instead send me some feedback send me a question so that's a really important part of it too can you briefly explain like i'm trying to understand from user perspective if i was to get a fountain right now how how would i you know fund my wallet you know you just mentioned that you know they have to get the lightning you know, get the bitcoin and lightning somewhere and how do they you know I know I've seen, for, I see how the podcast do get paid, but how do the users, you know, to fund their wallets and actually send, you know, boost their the podcast? Yeah, great question. So right now, if you download Fountain, you can create a wallet in Fountain and then you can fund that wallet um, from any other Lightning wallet. We don't allow you to buy Bitcoin within Fountain uh, for, you know, regulatory reasons, but um, you can fund it from any uh, wallet that supports lightning so cash app strike in the us uh, blue wallet is one that we often recommend uh, internationally because you know it works really well and you can actually buy bitcoin through moonpay on blue wallet directly on lightning so that's the easiest on ramp for someone that's never used lightning before but yeah that's also a challenge right because as a brand new user you want to experience boosting a podcast as soon as possible and if you know the the easiest way right now is to download Blue Wallet, then buy through another company called MoonPay, and then wait for the confirmation to come through before transferring it back into Fountain. You know, it's not the it's not the most seamless thing. So that's also a challenge: is yeah, getting Sats into people's hands uh, as soon as possible. How closely did you work with Adam Curry and Dave Jones uh, when you guys were developing the Fountain app? Yes. So, I mean, the great thing about what Adam and Dave are doing is that it's an open spec. So we actually didn't, you know, talk to them before we actually built the the payment, uh, the streaming technology within Fountain. We just built on top of the spec that they had already put out there. Obviously, before launching, you know, we sent them the app in in beta and and things like that. Um, But since then, we we work quite closely with them. Um, I mean, Adam is the pioneer of the value for value model and as i said before like for podcasters it's actually less about the technology and more about like the education around how do you actually ask your audience to support you so that's like a really really important piece and you know i would encourage anyone listening to go and check out some of the interviews adam has done in order to find out what's the best way to ask for support yeah i guess um one thing you mentioned uh was that like a lot of people were coming to fountain into lightning not because of investment or freedom or anything like that but more because of the actual utility of 
podcast and and this is exactly the kind of thing this is exactly the reason i like podcasting to a lot and this is exactly what i've been looking for i always think that the best way for people to be orange pilled is not usually number go up and it's not usually like you know freedom that's i think because a lot of people realistically in a lot of countries not all countries but a lot of the western world you know the us uk whatever a lot of people haven't ever really had problems with their money being censored or like that yeah then being able to not send money or a lot of people in those countries majority don't really have problems with any of these things and haven't to date experienced uh, their government taking money out of their bank account or uh, super horrific devaluation of their currency to date i should say because i've I'm now in the camp of people who believe that we're pretty screwed for the next couple of years, but we'll see. Um, so I, I think that having things like this, these tools is, is the best way for you to actually see the value in, in, in something like Bitcoin. And we kind of need more stuff like this, really. Um, so what you guys are doing is pretty, uh, pretty good in my books. How, how can people kind of like support you guys? Is the best way just to download the app and start using it? Or is there anything else? The best way is to just download Fountain. Uh, you can import your podcast from Apple or Spotify or OPML as well. So yeah, just download Fountain, um, check it out. And yeah, just give us feedback. We're working really hard on the core listener experience. So if there's anything that you think is missing in terms of features, just send us an email and we'll get that built for you. Um, and yeah, check out the clipping feature create some clips share them we also have a clip playlist feature so what you can do as a user on fountain is create playlists of not only your own clips but clips that you discover from others as well so i've got a playlist on there about bitcoin I've got a playlist on there about podcasting 2.0 about value for value so that's a great way that you know if you love podcasts you know why not start creating some clips of your favorite show and that can actually you know, help new people discover the show. You can share that with the podcaster as well. But yeah, just download Fountain, check it out, and yeah, let us know if you have any feedback. Uh, you didn't mention that, um, you know, you're a startup and you just, I think, throwing in the company. Um, and obviously, everybody knows that, you know, working, you know, going as a startup is always, you know, very hard. And would you consider, you know, I remember you, you, you did have motivation for creating um, Fountain. But would you consider taking out an invest, investment you know, in the future? And if you do, first, you, know, you also consider that you, know, you are opening yourself and you're making yourself vulnerable to you know, outside external influences, you know, telling you to turn down the you know, language of your podcast and all that censorship, censorship you know, stuff. So is this something that you consider doing? And if you did, how would you, you know, deal with that? If not, you know, are you just going to continue on the path of you know, hopefully you know, bootstrapping? Yeah, so we do actually have a small amount of, of funding. Um, so we already have, you know, taken some outside investment. And I guess I still fundamentally just see it as the way we started this was all about helping listeners discover and share the best moments from podcasts. So I think as long as we stick to that, uh, then we'll be fine. I think there's so much to do. I think people love podcasts so much. But the, the actual listening experience is, is very limited right now. It's limited in the sense of how you actually discover new content. You know, you just, your feed just updates each day. And then it's also limited in terms of how do you actually share, but also experience listening to podcasts with other people as well, because it's quite an uh, individual thing. You know, like you don't normally talk about you know what you listen to what podcast you listen to or what went on in that conversation with with friends or family so yeah i think as long as we stick to that we'll be we'll be fine oscar how does the lightning part work it, um is it like a custodial node like are you guys ensuring the liquidity and stuff like that yeah so right now it is custodial we're looking at supporting various non-custodial options um i think for us like we're because we're onboarding people that have never really used Bitcoin before or heard about Bitcoin. Um, introducing the non-custodial option uh, for that audience is going to be very difficult. But I do think in the future, what we want to do is give users the choice. So you can either use the custodial wallet or potentially if you pay a bit of an upfront fee, uh, you can switch to some kind of non-custodial setup whereby the um, you know, this concept of like remote signer is, is starting to be uh, talked about now. So I think something like that would work quite well for us. Although on the podcaster side, it's a bit more difficult because obviously to receive, you need to be online. So 
the podcast, the wallets do need to be online twenty four seven. I guess the yeah, the, the podcast being online twenty four seven can be quite a challenge. Like, have you guys been? How many podcasts have you guys been working with directly to help them kind of convert to this uh, this kind of approach? Yeah, so we launched our Fountain Podcast the Wallet feature in I think it was uh, February of this year. So it's it's only been live for a couple of months. And basically, what this does is it allows any podcaster to basically lightning enable their show um, in a couple of clicks on Fountain. And this is great because before that, you'd have to actually run your own node, which again, a lot of podcasters not in the Bitcoin space are probably not going to want to do. Um, and yeah, we've had great response so far. One of the interesting things is um, when we initially uh, started, we thought that all of the value here would be the actual financial value. But it's actually so much more than that for podcasters because you get this incredible insight into which episodes are performing the best, essentially, and also which users are supporting you the most. And also you have a, a messaging system with your listeners um, that works cross app as well. So, you know, if you have a fountain podcaster wallet or if you're running your own node, you'll be able to see the incoming boost messages from different apps, which is kind of something that has not been possible before with podcasting just i'm just thinking now uh something that i know you guys are working on was this like comments feature um I, please uh go ahead and tell everyone about that because obviously it's quite like an exciting development in the last uh, couple of weeks yeah so basically what we've done with this new feature is we're surfacing all of the boosts publicly on the episode screen and we're also hooking that into the social features that exist on fountain so what this means is that number one if you go onto an episode page in Fountain, you'll be able to see all of the boosts that have been sent to that episode ranked by the number of Satoshis that have been attached to the boost. Um, and we think this is great because one, it just lets you see what other listeners are saying about that episode. It's important to say we also have the ability to set the boost to private if, if you want to do that. Um, but then secondly, uh, and sorry, that also incentivizes users to actually pay more because if you go onto the episode screen and you see the top boost is for 100,000 sats, are you more likely to boost 100 sats or 1,000 sats? So we think it's going to be beneficial for podcasters in that sense. Um, but then also, similarly to what I was saying about the clips being a signal about which episodes are good to listen to, the boosts are actually another great signal. So if if I follow you on Fountain, and I see um, whether it's through a notification or on the episode screen that you have boosted, you know, 100,000 sats to this episode with a very long message saying this was an incredible episode. I learned so much. I can't wait for the next, you know, that kind of thing. That's really good signal for you that that episode is worth paying attention to and, and worth listening to. So that's another reason why we think surfacing the boost public is, is really exciting. So, yeah, that features live now. If you go on to any episode screen from a lightning enabled podcast such as this one uh, you'll be able to see all of the boosts oscar are the users able to interact with each other um i know like with sphinx chat there there was like a chat room that the podcasters could have uh called a tribe and like say we both listen to no agenda adam curry's podcast could we like chat with each other about the latest episode yeah so right now you can actually reply to boost so if i left a boost on no agenda and you saw that boost you'd be able to reply to me however one caveat is I'm, I'm not sure we've quite figured out the right balance here because as a podcaster that can be quite confusing for example if you see an incoming message that was actually a reply so we're still figuring out exactly um, how that interaction should go but I think we've, we've taken the first step which is allowing any fountain user to see what the boost messages are from other users and also allow them to reply. And I guess something that comes to mind now, like you're talking about, so you're talking about the original development, right? Like originally you guys had clipping, then you obviously moved into this the podcast 2.0 and, and now you've got this, this comment feature. Um, what is What is your overall goal right now with the fountain app? Like, do you have some kind of future goal in mind where you're creating more than what it is now and like what kind of things are in the pipeline for for the immediate future and then i guess uh, are there any kind of cool ideas you'd want to share or 
or sort of fun goals that you have for the longer term future? Yeah, great question. We've got a lot that we're um, working on. I'd say there's like three different kind of areas. The first one is just the listener experience. So we've still got a lot to do um, in terms of getting feature to parity with some of the other apps. So things like CarPlay, we need better support for the smart um, speed features like voice boost and, and uh, skip silences. They're heavily requested features. So that's a big focus. Um, and then I think just encouraging more of the clipping, because that's the thing that we think is going to be really powerful long term. Um, we've got some really exciting um, stuff coming around that just to make it one easier to create clips two easier to discover clips from others and three like giving podcasters the ability to actually you know incentivize that um, and yeah I think that oh yeah and then the third thing is just we want to you know we're having a lot of success with bitcoin podcasts um, but we do want to make sure that we um, kind of broaden that out and start onboarding more and more uh, podcast to the Lightning Network that don't necessarily have a Bitcoin focus, that are just doing it for the listener support and also the cool social features that come with it. So it sounds like you've got a lot of exciting plans uh, ahead. And I, and I know that in the space of like um, Bitcoin and in just the general world and businesses, uh, things change all the time, right? And you've got to adapt um, different laws, regulations, different demands from customers, all sorts of things. Like how how much have you seen uh, growth wise, uh, and and what kind of demands are you getting from or, or, or requests are you getting from customers for certain features? Like, is there any kind of uh, sort of repetitive uh, request that you think, okay, damn, like people really want this, or like what kind of stuff are you hearing? So the ones I mentioned, really, I mean, CarPlay is our number one requested feature by far, and then after that, it's actually the yeah the smart speed features like voice boost and skip silences so and like auto leveling stuff like that so that's definitely a big focus obviously it's it's not you know as exciting or forward looking as the the stuff we're doing with lightning but yeah it's really important and we're working on it so it should be available soon i think what you guys are doing is pretty exciting and i know that um well as anyone can tell from your accent that you're from the uk and, and that you guys are looking at the uk so i'm hoping to I'm returning in a couple of weeks as, you, as as we spoke about already. So I'm hoping to, to drop by and see you guys and, and kind of uh, get a, a good feel for how things are working um, between you and and kind of what you see the growth being from a business perspective, but also from the application perspective. Um, what I, I've got a question for you, which is a bit random, but fuck it. Uh, if you weren't working on Fountain right now, um, but you were like still, you know, sort of honed in on, on kind of doing something to do with Bitcoin or crypto. Um, what do you think you'd be doing? And I know this is a bit of a tough question because you said like before that, you know, you were kind of between things when after your, your last company uh, was uh, was completed. So um, yeah, I guess like, is there anything else that you think is important in the space um, that you think you'd be working on? I think the thing that excites me the most about Bitcoin is the international aspect of it and how it can potentially bring people a bit closer because they're using the same monetary network. So I don't really have anything specific about idea about that, but something to do with the international nature of Bitcoin. That's what really excites me the most other than the applications for media, which is obviously like what Fountain is all about. So yeah, I, I know it's a bit of a cop-out answer, but um <laughs> yeah so, something something around that maybe uh the other thing just again random question random answer but i i'm massively into kind of aerospace and things like that so i might might go and work in in aerospace if i wasn't doing fountain that's pretty cool like sticking to your passions and stuff yeah i know it's a difficult question it's one of those things where you probably need a joint and, and, a, and a whiskey or something to get to get to get really to the deep deep part of that one but um no that's fine i um aerospace okay yeah i guess like is there have you ever done anything in the aerospace industry before or is that more like a passion uh, I, I studied aerospace engineering so kind of but i didn't actually end up working um there but yeah i, I think that yeah still very interested in it we actually interviewed adam curry a while back and he was talking about um one of the major motivations for podcasting 2.0 was the fact that apple had kind of cornered the market on the podcast index is fountain using adam curry's podcast index or the apple podcast index yeah so we're using the podcast index uh, from from adam 
um, and Dave. Yeah, and we we definitely are behind the uh, mission of Podcasting 2.0 and the Podcast Index. So yeah, we hope that you know we can support their growth um, because we get so we give one percent um, of all transactions to Podcast Index. Um, so yeah, we, we hope that um, the growth of Podcasting 2.0 the growth of Fountain and also ultimately the growth of the other podcasting 2.0 apps as well. We can all work together to kind of be a counter uh, measure to the centralization of podcasting through the legacy platforms. Um, yeah. Um, I just downloaded the app here. So I'm going to give it a go. Um, but I do have a question. Um, aside, you know, I wanted to know the other challenges that you face aside, you know, the obvious ones of, um, you know, having to, you know, deal with the integration of um, Lightning Network, you know, dealing with the you know, customers and the low barrier to entry. What other challenges have you, you know, faced, you know, as a team, you know, building Falcon? One of the biggest is just the onboarding for a brand new user. Like, it's just, we have a blog post that explains how to get your first SATs into Fountain. And it's so long and convoluted that for your average user, that doesn't really, that's, it's just a lot to do. So that's been the big challenge because it also puts off podcasters as well. Because if a podcaster is asking somebody to switch apps and support them, you know, they want to make sure that it's a very easy and seamless process. So that's definitely been the biggest challenge. Once we get sats into people's hands and once they start supporting, things are great from there. We've actually seen that the retention is so much higher for somebody that is actually able to make it to that point. So that's definitely the biggest challenge. I think I'm hopeful that there's there will be better solutions available, you know, in terms of just giving people that easy first on-ramp. Um, so yeah, that's probably it. I know you guys mentioned regulations as a reason for why you can't purchase um, sats in the app. But are you guys planning to add that functionality to where, like, if I don't know anything about Bitcoin, I can just swipe my credit card and fund my account? Yeah, it's something we've thought a lot about. I don't think we will offer it directly because I think just fundamentally as a podcast app and a podcasting platform, we, we don't want to go down that route. I think hopefully we'll be able to do it through partnerships, though. So that might be that you're still actually uh, purchasing those sats in the fountain app but you're not actually going through fountain you're going through a partner and hopefully we can do that because it would be small amounts to start with hopefully we can do that you know in a light to no kyc way um which i think is also important because again why should i have to give up my you know identity details for a podcast app like that doesn't make any sense so yeah hopefully through partnerships we can get that on ramp working yeah i think there's different different options out there when it comes to, to partners lots of different companies i think you already mentioned moon pay is like a, a company that um, has been used and there's lots of different companies like that out there and ones that are kind of more lightning based so hopefully you'll find a find a solution uh i know we've been running for about 50 minutes or so i don't know if jerry ricardo you have any more questions at all yeah uh do you once uh, i know you mentioned you had someone doing the marketing like do you guys approach the broadcasters or they come to you guys for you know you know, to work together? Yeah, it's definitely a bit of both. I think we've approached a lot of podcasters, um, but a lot of podcasters have approached us. Luckily, it's, you know, the podcasting 2.0 movement, again, that Adam and Dave are spearheading, you know, that does generate a lot of interest in the podcasting space. So, you know, podcasters do approach us. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of both. How many uh, podcasts do you have that are signed up for Lightning in the Fountain app right now? Yeah, so there's over 5,000 Lightning-enabled podcasts, and they're not, you know, through Fountain necessarily. That could be anyone, again, who's self-hosting their RSS feed with a pub key. Um, Fountain specifically, I think we have about 60 podcasters that are using our podcaster wallet and so have been onboarded to Lightning through Fountain. And have you spoken to like any of the larger like more centralized podcasting services like itunes or spotify or iheart radio um like ha do they have interest in implementing podcast 2.0 features like into their platforms i think my opinion is that for the likes of apple and spotify specifically i i feel like it kind of is going against their 
existing business model to implement something like this. So I don't anticipate them doing it anytime soon. I think some of the uh, other more uh, indie podcast apps potentially might do it. And, you know, we would, we would love that to happen because we think that, uh, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats. Um, and yeah, we, we think it would be beneficial for Fountain if that happened, but not the big players because, you know, I don't know how many millions of dollars Spotify has invested in their own uh, internal payment system, but they, they want to keep that and, you know, they make fees on that. So adopting Lightning where the, the fee rate uh, is much lower and doesn't kind of hold people into the Spotify ecosystem kind of goes against like what they're all about. So I don't anticipate them in, introducing it anytime soon. And my last question is, let's say I'm a brand new podcaster and this whole thing sounds great. I want to get involved with podcasting 2.0. Like what's the tech stack that you would advise me to use? Obviously Fountain, but like what hosting, what what other apps? Yeah, so a couple of uh, actual podcast hosts that I'd recommend. Number one is Buzzsprout. Um, so they offer quite a few of the new podcasting 2.0 tags like chapters. Uh, another one is rss.com. So I'd recommend checking out one of those as your actual host. And then, yeah, if you want to um, set up your podcast to receive sats over the Lightning Network, check out our podcaster wallet. You can see all the details about that on fountain.fm. And yeah, it's just a couple of clicks. And we give you loads of uh, analytics on yeah which episodes are bringing in the most, which users are supporting the most. And also we give you the ability to actually manage episode level split so what this means is you can actually give a guest or you know somebody else a 50 percent split or a 25 percent split of all of the income for that particular episode and that stays that way forever even as you release new episodes so that's one of the really cool features that um, we're excited to see more adoption of i guess since i started the app i'm getting 50 percent, and jerry and lawrence will get 25 each <laughs> sounds very fair leader ricardo uh absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah uh, we gotta think of something uh uh cool to to do with any sats if we do receive any um for our podcast maybe like donate them to something uh interesting or or just i don't know spend it on a load of booze i don't know whatever whatever it is we'll decide what we're gonna do <laughs> do, you, do you guys have plans to let like um the podcasters do like giveaways and sats or anything like that like for contests and things of that nature yeah so we have actually been running a couple of these uh this month manually um just you know uh giving some sats to for podcasters to reward new users but i think um we're actually working on an update which will allow podcasters to add any fountain user into their splits just by tagging their username which we think will make this process way easier because right now in order to receive a split you need a lightning pub key and obviously we have that for our podcasters but not for every fountain user so that's something that should make it easier and and then it's kind of you know it's up to the podcaster i think there's a million different ways that they can structure that well yeah i think uh, I, i'm all out of questions i know jerry ricardo you guys are i think right i'm gonna to wrap up too too soon yeah it's, it's perfect timing we've been going back 55 minutes or so anyway so um i think it's a good timing for it but um yeah uh oscar man like uh, appreciate you coming on to the to the pod it's uh it's been good it's been interesting to hear about like uh yeah the creation of fountain where you started the, the future goals and dreams and ideas and i think uh, everyone out there listening go ahead and, and download fountain app it's on the play store and it's on the app store and it's free to download and you can create an account. Um, and if you get it now, you can probably get a cool username that's like very unique because you know, it's uh, early in the, the, the journey of the app. Uh, I think I just took Lawrence. So <laughs> can't take that anyone out there listening, suckers. Uh, but yeah, th thanks for coming on, man. It's been, been awesome. Is there anything you want to plug or say before you head out? No, I don't think so. It's just, yeah, if you haven't already, download Fountain. We're live on iOS and Android. Just go to fountain.fm uh, and you'll see all the links there. But yeah, thanks so much for having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's been great. So yeah, anyone out there listening, um, I hope you're having a great uh, day, week, month, year. Uh, keep being awesome. Keep buying Bitcoin. Keep loving life. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Take care.